So today we'll discuss about the spatial domain. In the space domain, we'll do the MOM. We have done the spectral domain MOM in the last class. In the space domain also, we can do the MOM. And uh, we'll be particularly interested in MPI. MPI means mixed potential integral equation. So here, we will convert the electric field integral equation into mixed potential integral equation. Basically, we convert the electric field into potential functions, easier for us to solve. And uh, one of the major advantages for mixed potential integral equation is that the singularity in the Green's function, Green's function has a singularity when source and observation point are at the same location. So that singularity is actually less singular. For example, if your Green's function for the electric field integral equation is having singularity of the point one by R minus R dS, modulus of that. If your Green's function for the electric field integral equation has singularity of the form one minus one by R minus R dS whole cube, for example, then MPI will have simply like singularity of one by one by R minus R dS modulus of that. So the singularity is less pronounced in terms of MPI. So that's a major advantage, singular, less singular than that of the electric field integral equation. So you can always express magnetic field as curl of A. A is the magnetic vector potential. And you know that, let's say I want to find, uh, I want to find magnetic field intensity from the magnetic vector potential. Then I take the curl of magnetic vector potential divided by mu. Mu is the material parameter. So once I have magnetic vector potential, I can always find magnetic field intensity. Similarly, I can also find electric field from the potential functions. Electric field for the electrodynamic fields is basically minus J omega A minus gradient of phi. Gradient of phi, negative of gradient of phi is when you have electrostatics, but when you have electrodynamics, you'll have one extra term here, which is minus dou A by dou T. If you consider time harmonic fields, dou by dou T can be replaced by J omega. So you can find electrodynamic fields in terms of magnetic vector potential and electric potential as minus j omega a minus del phi. So we'll actually use this to simplify the expression for the Green's function as well as for the expression for the electric field. And uh, electric field expression, uh, Green's function, you can derive it for the uh, potential, mixed potential, spectral domain, it, Green's function, you can derive it easily by using this formula here. This can be derived, actually we have derived this. When you assume that there is an X directed current source, what is the Green's function you have for a mixed potential spectral Green's function is one is GXX. A means is for the magnetic vector potential. If you want to find GXX for A in the spectral domain, you simply find out like one by J omega mu naught uh, voltage horizontal for the T mode voltage horizontal for the T mode in the T equivalent circuit model, you find out the horizontal voltage. And that is actually equal to the equivalent impedance for the T mode. You find out the impedance looking up and looking down and you take the parallel combination of that, you get the equivalent impedance and you multiply with the current, current anyway is one amp. So <clears throat> B horizontal T mode should be equal to equivalent impedance for T mode and uh, we have already found out a very simple expression for that. This whole expression can be simplified in this form where your 1 by DTE, DTE is the denominator function which is already defined in the previous lecture. So you can simply find out GXX for the magnetic vector potential in the spectral domain as 1 by J DTE. DTE expression already derived in the previous class. Similarly, you can also find out G5. Phi is for the potential function, electric potential function. Can be found out as J omega epsilon naught by K rho square. You can derive it. Uh, and uh, I think for this class, you don't need to derive this expression. You assume that this is already there. So then you find out horizontal TM voltage minus horizontal T voltage. So this is actually equal to equivalent impedance for TM mode. This is equal to equivalent impedance for the T mode. And this you can actually find out the simplified expression. It is already given in the previous class. So the final expression for G phi in the spectral domain, which is the uh, 
Green's function for the phi potential is j by k rho square k naught square dtm and dt is already de defined in the previous lecture. So the final expression for g phi in the spectral domain is expressed in terms of dt and dtm. So we have the expression for g a and g phi. Once we have that, we can actually use the mixed potential integral equation and find out the unknown current density. Uh, just before that, let us spend some time on the spatial domain dyadic Green's function. The integral equation we'll be considering now would be in the space domain. So we need to know some relations here. First is if I want to find a space domain GXXA from the spectral domain GXXA, then what do I do? I just multiply it by the Bessel's functions of first kind of zero order and integrate it from zero to infinity. Let's say if I want to find uh, G phi in the space domain, I just integrate it from zero to infinity G phi, multiply with Bessel's function of first kind of zero order with K rho T K rho, then integrate it. So how do I get this relation? So this is basically finding the space domain mixed potential Green's function from the spectral domain uh, mixed potential Green's function, which was just discussed now. We have the express spectral domain mixed potential Green's function, you can find out it from the T and TM circuit model of a multi-layered structure. So this is how you get the space domain. How do you get this relation? That's what we are going to see. <clears throat> you know that inverse Fourier transform is defined like this. 2D inverse Fourier transform is defined like this. So this is GEJ. GEJ means is the Green's function for electric field due to a current density J. So GEJ PQ in the spectral domain, if you want to find the inverse Fourier transform and find the space domain, then you use this relation here. You multiply by 1 by 2 pi square, do the double integration, minus infinity to plus infinity. Then you multiply by exponential mm -hmm. minus jkx, x minus x dash, exponential minus jky, y dash, dkx, dky. This was the relation you have for the inverse Fourier transform to the inverse Fourier transform. We have already seen this in the last class also, where PQ, PQ may take any value like x or y. You can just substitute PQ as X, Y, different values of uh, Green's function. You can have it here. For example, if you want to have G, J, X, X, P, and Q is X, then here you will have G, J, X, X in the space domain. This is in the spectral domain. That's how you can get all the four uh, electric dyadic Green's function in the space domain and the spectral domain. So now from here, how do I get this relation like this? where I actually multiply the Green's function with the Bessel's function of first kind of zero order and do the integration and get the space domain Green's function. This is clear to us. We have already used it in the last class, but from here, how do I get that previous relation? I have just told you. This can be done by using a substitution. You substitute Kx as K rho cos alpha, Ky as K rho sin alpha, then K rho is basically K rho cos alpha x hat plus K rho sin alpha y hat x hat and y hat are the unit vector along the x-axis and y-axis respectively. So kx, x hat plus ky, y hat. The 2D Fourier transform we have mentioned above is for this kx and ky. Now we want to express it in terms of k rho and alpha. So now this was the expression you have. This was the 2D Fourier transform we have just discussed now. So when I make a substitution like this, then I can replace this uh, K as K rho vector, K rho vector we have just defined it. K rho vector is K rho cos alpha x hat plus K rho sin alpha y hat. We should have a vector sign. So I will replace this K by K rho, then R minus R dash. See, instead of this, X minus X dash, we have this X minus X dash, X minus X dash. KX, X minus X dash, KY, Y minus Y dash, I can replace it by j k rho dot product with r minus r ds. r is the observation point, r ds is the source point. So now look at this expression here, 1 by 2 pi, 0 to 2 pi. So I have done the integration. Have, we had the integration from minus infinity to plus infinity. When I make a substitution of k rho and alpha, k rho will go from 0 to infinity. Alpha will go from 0 to 2 pi. So this double differentiation, uh, double integration in in finite uh, range can be simplified into a semi-definite indefinite integration 0 to infinity and 0 to 2 pi. 
So looking at this term here inside the bracket, this term looks like your Bessel function. That's the definition for Bessel function. So first kind of zero order. That's how we get the J0 Kiro R minus R there's here. So that's how we get the previous expression for the transformation of Green's function in spectral domain to space domain. Which is basically you just multiply the Green's function in the spectral domain with the Bessel function of first kind of zero order and integrate over Kiro D Kiro. Well, the Kero is going from zero to infinity. So that's how you get the previous expression. Let us come back to the spectral domain MPIMOC. What did we do? We actually find out the spectral domain uh, mixed potential Green's function, GA and G phi in the spectral domain. And we use the for a transform, inverse for a transform and got the space domain mixed potential Green's function by using the inverse Fourier transform. And in order to get the space domain, Green's function from the spectral domain Green's function, I just multiplied by the Bessel function J0 and the integrated of D Kero, Kero, D Kero, we integrate Kero from zero to infinity. That's how you get the space domain Green's function. I have the space domain Green's function. So I can come back to the potential mixed potential integral equation to use apply MOM. So let us look at the mixed potential integral equation. You assume that this is for an X directed horizontal electric dipole. So then this current is flowing along the X direction in the dipole. So now what was the equation for the electric field integral equation? Electric field integral equation says that whenever you have a conductor, tensile component of the electric field is equal to zero. And that tensile component of the electric field is equal to zero will have two components. Total electric field will have two components. One is the incident field, one is the scattered field. So that's how you can. Z is Z cross E total is tangential equal to zero. <coughs> So Z cross E to ten tangential field equal to zero, but ten, uh, total electric field will compose incident field and scattered field. So when I do Z cross with any field, this field would be actually tangential to the normal component. See, if you're considering X, Y plane, the normal is Z. When you do N cross E incident, this will be always tangential. So Z cross tangential field of the electric field of the incident electric field can be uh, calculated like this and tensile component of the scattered electric field. This is the scattered electric field. And uh, we can calculate by doing the cross product with Z. Z is normal to the surface if this is an XY plane. So when you do Z cross with any vector, this vector would be always tangential to the surface. So we have two components. One is incident one, one another is scattered one. So Z cross E incident is equal to minus Z cross E scattered. This is scattered electric field expression. You can calculate it from the Green's dyadic function uh, and the current density and non current and non current density is here. See this current density and the Green's function, you can find out the scattered electric field. So now this scattered electric field in the right hand side will actually convert it using the potential functions. That's the only thing. That's why we get a potential. Uh, mixed potential integral equation by converting this scattered electric field in terms of the potential functions. For that, we use the standard relation. If I want to find electric field in the uh, time bearing case or electrodynamic field E, then I actually find out as minus G omega A minus gradient of electric potential. We have already discussed this at the starting or the beginning of the class itself today. So now we'll use this relation and express the scattered electric field in the right hand side in terms of potential function, magnetic vector potential and the electric potential phi. You can derive the wave equation for the magnetic vector potential. I think we have discussed this in the last semester. <coughs> this is the wave equation for the magnetic vector potential, just like wave equation for the electric field. You use the Maxwell equation, Substitute one of them to the other, then you can get the wave equation. So the wave equation for the magnetic vector potential is del square plus k square a is equal to minus mu j. J is the source, a is what we are observing, a is the magnetic vector potential, j is the current density. This is a wave equation for the magnetic vector potential. From there, you can find out that magnetic vector potential is actually 
convolution of Green's function with the current density. Green's function here. See, basically, if I want to find a Green's function from this wave equation, what do I do? I replace this J by a delta function and find out what is A. That is how we define Green's function. That's also called Green's technique. So I replace this source by a delta function and find what is A. That will become Green's function. So I denote that Green's function at G A because this is a Green's function for the wave equation for the metric vector potential A. So when I do convolution of this Green's function G A with the current density, then I get the metric vector potential. That's a standard step you have. So now we also know from electrostatics, if I want to find potential phi, this would be phi here, potential phi, then I just do the convolution of the Green's function for electrostatics, which I denote it by G phi with the charge density, uh, with the charge QS. Then you do the integration over the source region. So when I do convolution of charge with the Green's function for electrostatic case, which I denote it by G phi, I get the potential function phi. So I know what is phi, I know what is A. So I know what is phi, I know what is A. I know what is A here, A is this. I know what is this phi here, this is phi. So I just substitute A and phi from this expression, then write the scattered electric field like this. So first term is minus J omega, so I have it minus J omega, so this minus and minus will cancel out. We have a minus sign here, this minus and this minus minus will cancel out, we'll have plus plus here. So first term is J omega, J omega, what is A? A is this here. So I've just written that J dot GS there, uh, GS, GS, GS there. So that's the first term here, J omega of this, J omega of A, right? Then minus del phi, minus del of this term here, so minus 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 will become plus, I've already told you. So it becomes plus del of this expression you have here, G phi QS DS. So this is actually what gives you the mixed potential integral equation. Why mixed potential? We have both uh, electric potential, also metric vector potential also, that's why mixed potential. And this integral equation is for the potential, that's why mixed potential integral equation. This is the equation we are going to solve. This is the mixed potential integral equation. That's how we get it. Just replace the right-hand side the scattered field by minus G omega A minus del phi in the electric field integral equation. Then we get the mixed potential integral equation. So this is a famous mixed potential uh, integral equation. And uh, this is actually proposed by one professor from EPFL. Actually, Switzerland has uh, to very good universities like IITs of Switzerland. Which one is uh, Swiss Federal Institute of Technology. There are two of them. One is in Lausanne, another is in Juris. There is a very famous professor in the electromagnetics, Juan Mozik. He actually proposed this mixed potential integral equation, and it was one of the most widely searched topic, uh, research topic in the MOM for many years. So. Uh, what do we do in MOM? We actually represent the unknown function. What is the unknown function? The unknown function is the current density here. So this unknown function, I will replace it by linear approximation mm -hmm. of uh, summation i going from 1 to capital and alpha i bi. bi is the basis function. So now here, what one more thing you can observe is the current and the uh, current density and the uh, js and qs there dependent on each other. See, what is equation of continuity? Any mm -hmm. charge which is coming out from a closed surface should be equal to rate of decrease of the, uh, any current which is coming out of a closed surface should be equal to rate of decrease of charge inside that enclosed by that closed surface. That relation is called the equation of continuity. Charge is always conserved. And this is the point form of the equation of continuity. Divergence of Js plus J omega Qs is equal to zero. So, QS and the JS are not independent of each other, they are dependent on each other. So I have already done the uh, linear approximation of JS and QS actually, by using this equation of continuity, QS can also be defined as summation I going from one to capital and alpha I minus divergence of the I divided by 
m side divided by g. Then you get this. So the uh, we have the same expansion function for gs and ks. They are interrelated from the equation of continuity. Let us plug it in the this. Uh, what do you say? Approximation of the unknown current density and charge in terms of non basis function in the previous equation here. This equation MPIE, then you get the MOM now, MOM equation. You also use Galloquin's method where your basis and testing functions are same. So basis and testing function are same. So we have two variables, one for the basis function, one for the testing function. And basis functions are used for approximate the unknown current density and the testing functions are the testing points and you know, observation points. So then you have the matrix equation, you can solve it. This is the mixed potential integral equation. Okay, so let us move on to the next topic. We have two more topics to be discussed in the MOM. So this is the next topic. What do we have? Electromagnetic absorption in the human body. So basically how much fills are absorbed in the human body. For example, you use a mobile phone, how much fill is absorbed by the mobile phone radiation on the human body? Is it acceptable? Is it uh, having is it having radiation hazard? You have to calculate all those things. So there's a parameter for that. One very important parameter for specifying how much is the electromagnetic absorption in the human body or any kind of animal or anything. So a specific absorption rate is the term, which is actually defines how much is the EM absorption. So you can look at the what is the acceptable value of EM absorption, SIR, for example, mobile phones. Usually they specify around 1.6 is good enough. If it is higher than 1.6, then uh, the health hazard from the mobile phone is higher. Huh? So basically, if you are buying a mobile phone, you can check down out the specific absorption rate. They, all the mobile phones give the, what is the SAR values for all the mobile phones? Let's say you are buying a new mobile phone from market, you need to check what is SAR for that new mobile phone. If it is above than 1.6, then it is harmful. Huh? This is actually decided by the one committee. So for mobile phones, SAR of 1.6 or lesser is good. If it is higher, then it's not good. Let's say your mobile phone is very cheap and uh, and it's giving many functions, but later on you realize SAR is higher than 1.6, then don't buy it. If it is less than 1.6, then even if it is costlier also, it's better for you. So SAR is a very good parameter which will give you an idea how much is the EM absorption in the human body. So how do we define this SAR? SAR is actually defined as sigma by rho E square. E is the electric field, RMS value of the internal field and strength. So this is the electric field strength. You take modulus square of that. E is a vector, so modulus square of that. Multiply it by the tissue conductivity, conductivity of the tissue. So in our body, we have different parts. We have bones, we have nails, we have muscles, we have blood. All of them will have different conductivity. So that conductivity sigma is specifying. Sigma is the tissue conductivity. And every part of the body had phase Every part will have different mass density also. So you, once you know what is the tissue conductivity and mass density, you measure how much is the internal electric field, then you can find out SAR. From there, you can find out how much is the EM absorption. Is it acceptable? Is it hazardous? All these things you can do. It. This is also one area of uh, very good research in the biological aspects of EM. And uh, what is the steps? Usual steps of MOM will be followed here. First step is you derive the appropriate integral equation. Then you convert the integral equation to a matrix equation and you solve the equations. Three steps in MOM would also be followed for EM absorption of uh, electromagnetic waves. But here we'll use tensor integral equation. Tensor integral equation. What is this tensor integral equation? We'll see it shortly. So when some electric field is incident on the human body, some current will be induced on the body. Whenever some electric field, it may be filled from the electric field from the mobile tower, from the antenna, or from anywhere. So whenever that field incident on the human body, some current will be induced on the body. And that induced current will give you some scattered field. 
So in this analysis, we'll actually try to uh, analyze our human body. We replace it by equivalent current density. Because when we fill this incident on the human body, some current will be induced. That current will actually generate some scattered fields. So we can actually replace human body by an equivalent current density. That's the whole idea of doing this analysis here using tensor integral equation. As always, let's go back to the Maxwell equations. Maxwell curl equation, curl of E is equal to minus G omega mu H. So now you take the curl of this again, curl of curl of E is equal to minus G omega mu naught curl of H. Curl of curl of E is equal to minus G omega mu naught curl of H. So what is curl of H? Curl of H is from the second Maxwell curl equation, sigma E plus G omega epsilon E. J plus G omega epsilon E. This is the displacement current, this is the conduction current. So this is by using the Ohm's low endpoint from I replace the conduction current by sigma E. Displacement current is G omega epsilon E. So what was displacement current? Del D by del T. D is epsilon E. Del by del T is a time harmonic function. I replace it by G omega. So G omega epsilon E. G omega D del d by del t but it's a time harmonic field so i replace del by del t by g omega g omega d so g omega d is epsilon e. so this is what we have here so now what i would do i will do a trick here i will just add g omega epsilon zero e and minus g omega epsilon e i can always do that i add a term g omega epsilon e in this and i also subtract a term g omega epsilon zero e I add a j omega epsilon zero e and subtract a term j omega epsilon zero e. So in that case, this will turn out to be sigma e plus j omega epsilon minus epsilon zero e plus j omega epsilon zero e. So this term, first term is the conduction current. The second term is actually polarization current. And this is the, actually for the free space, j omega epsilon zero e. So now what do I have? Curl of curl of e is del of del dot e minus del square a. Del of del dot e, if we are considering free space, then there's no charge density anywhere. So I can neglect the first time, turns out to zero. Del of del dot e, del dot e is equal to zero. So I simply have del square e. So you don't need to worry that. We can just write it curl of curl of e here. We can simplify it later on like that. So left hand side, we have curl of curl of e. Right hand side, this term, this term here, multiply with this term, you can express in terms of minus k naught square e, and we just place this term in the right hand side. Finally, what we have is curl of curl of e minus k naught square e is equal to minus g omega mu naught j equivalent. So all the effect of the human body has been taken care of by this equivalent current density you have here. This equation is the equation of the wave. So it is more or less like a wave propagating in free space and the equivalent current density has taken care of all the human body effect here, J equivalent. So this is the wave equation with J equivalent is a current density which has taken care of the effect of the human body. Look at the term J equivalent. J equivalent was composed of conduction current. Then what do you have? I have the, this is the polarization current. This is a conduction current, this is a polarization current. See, this overall thing I can express in terms of tau r e r. This whole thing I have taken care of tau r. This tau r is a tensor, this is a tensor just like your diet. So now tau r actually takes care of all the human body effects in a 3D matrix. This will have nine components, tau x, x, tau x, y, tau x, z, and so on, nine components will have. So now you consider a biological body of arbitrary shape. It could be human body, animal body, anything. And uh, material parameters is usually defined by epsilon, mu, and sigma. Since human body or any animal uh, body is not a magnetic material, mu will become mu zero. Only magnetic material will have mu is equal to mu naught epsilon r. But Human body or animal body will have different value of epsilon. Epsilon will become epsilon zero, epsilon r. Mu will become simply mu naught. Sigma will also change. Conductivity will also change. Depending on the, whether you're considering skin, bone, muscle, anything, sigma will change. Even epsilon parameter will also change. Mu will not change because it's not a magnetic material. So now you consider a wave which is impinging on a human body or an animal body. 
then it will induce some current on that and produce some current density, which is uh, fill, scattered field, which is called scattered ES. So if I want to find this time bearing scattered electric field, I always go back to the fundamentals. I want to find a scattered electric field, I just find it as minus G omega A minus del phi. And uh, A would be simply convolution of Green's function with the equivalent current density. She find out this equivalent current density here. This is equivalent current density. So that's the only difference. The equation remains the same. The current density I'm considering is the equivalent current density, which I can find out with, from this tensor relation we have here. J equivalent is equal to tau R E R, which has taken care of the conduction current and polarizing current. So this is a standard relation, except that current density I'm considering is the equivalent current density. Green's function for free space is exponential minus J K R minus R there divided by four by R minus R there. You apply the Lorentz Bose condition, divergence of A is equal to minus J omega mu epsilon phi. So from here I can find out phi. Phi is del dot A divided by minus J omega mu epsilon. So this relation here is scattered electric field is equal to minus J omega A minus del phi. Even this phi also I can express in terms of magnetic current density by applying the Lorentz Bose condition. So in that case, I can express the scattered electric fields entirely dependent on the magnetic current density by using the Lorentz Bose condition here. I replace phi also in terms of divergence of A divided by minus G omega mu epsilon. So scattered electric field is expressed as minus G omega A plus del, del dot A divided by G omega mu epsilon. Once I have the magnetic vector potential, I can easily find out magnetic field intensity as 1 by mu curl of A. So I can find all the fields once I have the magnetic vector potential. In order to find the magnetic vector potential, I need to know what is the equivalent current density. And Green's function for free space is this. Since the scattered electric field and magnetic field are dependent on magnetic vector potential, I actually find scattered electric field and magnetic field from the magnetic vector potential. And magnetic vector potential is dependent on the equivalent current density. So now all the fields are dependent on the equivalent current density in that case. Let us try to analyze, spend some time on the equivalent current density. Equivalent current density. Assume that we have equivalent current density and infinitesimally small current carrying element at RDS. Location of the infinitesimally small current carrying element is at RDS. And it's pointed along the x direction. So direction of the, see this is a vector. Let us assume that there is an infinitesimally small current carrying element. That means it will be a delta function. We have a current source which is a delta function and it's directed along the x-axis. What is the location? Location is at RDS. So how do I represent that current? infinitesimal small current carrying element directed along the x-axis. In that case, J equivalent would be delta R minus RTS except. For this infinitesimal small current carrying element located at RDS, which is directed along the x-axis, what should the magnetic vector potential? Magnetic vector potential is given as mu naught G0 J equivalent dvds. What is J equivalent here? J equivalent here is del R minus RTS X. So now by applying the property of delta function, when you integrate multiplying a delta function with that function, when you integrate it, you get the function at its location itself. So in that case, A will become simply mu naught G naught R comma R dash except. We have very simple expression for the A now for a delta source. And obviously this So this E, I will call it as G zero X R comma R this. This value of E. This is actually Green's function, no? Green's function. So, so what is a Green's function? Green's function is the, uh, what are we observing? We're observing the metric vector potential. And if I assume that source is a delta function, whatever I'm getting metric vector potential, that is the Green's function. Let us call this Green's function as G O X. This is for the x-directed source, so we'll call it GOX for the x-directed source. Is the electric field produced by the above mentioned ele electro elementary source? And obviously, Green's function should satisfy the wave equation we, we have derived at the beginning. 
What is the wave equation we have derived at the beginning? This was the wave equation. Curl of curl of E minus K naught square E is equal to minus G omega mu naught J cube. So this wave equation will be satisfied the magnetic vector potential also. So now this G zero X is actually the electric field produced by the uh, elementary function we have mentioned. So it will satisfy the wave equation. Curl of curl of G zero X minus K naught square G zero X minus G omega mu naught. What is the equivalent current density now? Del R minus R F. So now the solution for this. What is the solution for this? The solution for this is scattered G zero X is equal to. What is the solution for this? Solution is given by this. Solution is that E scattered is equal to minus G omega A plus del del dot A divided by G omega mu epsilon. We have already got what is the value of A when I have a delta source which is directed along the x axis at the location r there's I already know what is a I want to find e scatter I use this relation I can find out the e scatter what is a a is this mu naught g naught r comma r there's except so if I want to find e scattered it will be equal to minus g omega mu naught g zero r comma r there's x there's del 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 dot g g zero except divided by g omega epsilon. See, this is the relation we have for the E scatter. I already know what is A from the previous expression. A is mu naught g naught r comma r this except. I just plug in the value of A from the previous relation, then I find out the scatter electric field. So what is A? A is mu naught g naught r comma r this except. So I just plug in A here, then I get the E scatter. E scatter for A, Delta source excitation, which is directed along the x-axis and the uh, position at R there. You can even make this in a more compact notation like this: minus g omega mu naught one plus one by k square del del dot g zero r comma r just etc. This is g zero x. This is a field produced by a electric field produced by a delta source located at R there, directed along the axis. We can also do it for G zero Y and G zero Z. What should we do? We actually assume a delta source located at R there's directed along the Y axis and find out the field that is called G zero Y. We can also do it for delta source directed along the Z axis position at R there's. In the similar way we have done before, we can get G zero Z. So finally, we get the dyadic function, which will store this three, three space Green's function g0 x vector except g0 y vector y hat plus g0 z vector z hat. So this is your Green's dyadic function. It will have three components, g0 x, g0 y, g0 z. This is called the free space dyadic Green's function. And it is the solution of the dyadic differential equation. Curl of curl of g0 dyadic G0 minus K0, G0 dyadic minus G omega mu naught. This is the ident identity unit vector, uh, unit diet delta R minus R this. Unit diet is X except plus Y, Y hat, Z, Z hat. Whatever derivations we have done just now, you can directly use this equation and find out the solution for G0 green dyadic. And that is going to be tough. That's why we have gone systematically. I think I should stop here. Maybe you have a lot of questions. Any questions here? Well, when we are using electric field integral equation, and now we are using uh, slow down. I cannot hear properly. Slow down and, and speak louder. Who is speaking? Uh, Ambush. Uh, Ambush. Yeah. Sir, in the first we are using electric field elect integral equation for the MOM an analysis. Now we are using the mixed potential function for the MOM analysis. So, what is the difference between these two, sir, or why we are using? Stopping. Next potential in some speed of electrical integral. 
Wait one second. I have not stopped the recording.